Uh, and I remember sitting just like this. It was about midnight in my kid's bedroom. Mitchell was asleep behind me and Jordan was in her cot just across from me. And uh, I sat there on the floor like this, looking at the bank statement going, what have I done? And I remember it vividly. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done to my family? I haven't made a sale. I've spent all our money. I invested in this business and I haven't delivered. I'm a firm believer that life is full of moments. And when we learn from those moments, that's what gives us momentum in life. And one moment that I remember vividly that pretty much changed the course of my life uh, in that time, there's been plenty of other moments since, don't, don't get me wrong, um, was actually 20 years ago, pretty much to the day today. It was October 1999. And uh, we had recently moved into a basement apartment in Barrie, Ontario, on 157 Bayfield Street, as a matter of fact. Uh, it was underneath a tanning salon. And we moved into this basement apartment as I was launching my business and I needed my own space so I could actually grow the business. And, you know, these were all the things going through the rationale, the reasons I was justifying why we needed to move into this place. Now, understanding that, that cash was very tight at that time, we'd sold our house, bought the license for the organization, which was very expensive to uh, grow this business. Um, and, but I thought, don't worry, I'm going to be so extremely successful. I've been ex successful in my past, so going forward it won't be a problem. I just get out there and I'll smash down the doors and, uh, and I'm going to tear the world apart. And uh, there we were in October and I was going through the bank statements and I looked and I realized I'd had about enough money to last one more month uh, in terms of rent and food and that was about it. Uh, and I remember sitting just like this. It was about midnight in my kid's bedroom. Mitchell was asleep behind me and Jordan was in her cot just across from me. And uh, I sat there on the floor like this, looking at the bank statement going, what have I done? And I remember it vividly. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done to my family? I haven't made a sale. I've spent all our money. I invested in this business and I haven't delivered. And uh, it was one of the most powerful moments in my life only because I sat there and I thought to myself, okay, you got to give up on this silly pipe dream, Dave, of having your own business and determining your own future and success and all this sort of stuff. Go get it back to get a safe job, you know, go back into a bank or do something like that and find a nice safe and secure career and make sure you take care of your family, um, which was the sound rationale at the time. However, I just sat there and I just let that sink in. And I remember looking across to Jordan, sleeping peacefully in, in her cot there. I mean, gosh, she was only six months old. And there was Mitchell behind me. And uh, as I looked at both of them, and I thought, if I quit now, what am I going to teach my kids? That when things get tough, just quit. Or get back to doing something that's comfortable because I was pushing the boundaries of my comfort zone. I talk about expanding your comfort zone and I was really pushing and expanding my comfort zone boundaries so much so that I've almost burst a few of them, I guess. And I thought that moment, that very moment I was sitting there on the floor, if I quit today, what have I taught these two about life when things get tough? And so I decided at that very moment, that I was going to evolve, I was going to grow, I was going to shift the way I thought about things. I couldn't just rest on my laurels anymore uh, and rest on the talents and abilities that I had. I needed to find a new way, a different way of thinking to move me forward. And that I owed it to both of them for the long term in their lives, but even in that very moment, to show that you can go after your dreams, you can go after your goals. And that's when I woke up the next morning, tired, exhausted from crying all night, I was literally bawling my eyes out on the floor there. Uh, and I developed my own sales methodology, a way that I was going to go out and I was going to talk to the world and talk to the market. Because what I realized in that moment is that people don't buy from hungry people. I was going out there because I wanted to close the sale for me. 
I needed to get business. I needed to pay my rent. I needed to put food on my table. I needed to take care of my kids and everything like that. It was all about me. But I realized in that moment, it was nothing to do with me. It was all about the customer, my clients, or the people that I wanted to serve. And when I realized that, I just wrote down a sales methodology process that started the customer experience from the very moment I had my first conversation with them. And you know, today, like I absolutely bang on to my clients and people and anyone who ever talks to me about that it's nothing to do with you. It's all about the customer. It's all about the person you choose to serve. And then how are you going to help them? Forget about yourself, help that person. And the more people you help, you'll be well taken care of. And it was a big switch that flipped in my head back in October 1999. And ever since then, I've made sure I stay focused on staying relevant in the hearts and minds of the people that I choose to serve. And it starts from my very first conversation I have with them as a prospect or a potential client. And that's where that came from. That moment in my life, sitting there on the floor in that basement apartment, bawling my eyes out, looking at my kids, wondering what I'd done to them. So please, don't ever give up on what you're working on. And also, go out and care about other people and help them achieve their goals, and you will achieve yours quite simply. And this is why I guess from a purpose point of view, to me, I really believe that your purpose lies at the crossroads of the problem that you see in the world and the thing that you're most passionate about. It's what are you willing to endure through? Because our passion is about our ability to endure suffering. And if you don't have that passion to solve that problem in the world, you'll give up. Which is why everything starts with purpose. Purpose is the seed of culture. In that very moment, purpose, me getting clear on my sense of purpose of the problem that I wanted to solve, which was other people's problems, not my own problems, changed my life forever. Changed my perspective on business. Changed my perspective on how I did everything. So please, never give up on what it is that you'd like to do and be of service to the world. Because you never know who's watching.